everybody tonight can you hear me okay let me know if you can hear me hi Julie okay you hear me super not being too loud to being too obnoxious for once maybe I don't know. so how you guys doing <clears throat> chats catching up here Kenneth good to see you good to see you my friend glad you could join us um, I'm going to wait a few more minutes and see if there's a couple more people that want to join us. So I need like a mirror that I can look through. Like I see Kenny and I see, you know, I feel like I'm on, was it romper room? <laughs> Past paranormal pics. Hey, I know who you are. How's it going? You got Julie. Julie. Yell at Michael to get his butt online. <laughs> So anyway, so great, great to see everybody. Um, so last week we were talking about the consciousness of, oh, let's see that, let's see here. Give me a second guys, getting into my stuff here. Okay, so last week we were actually talking about the consciousness, <clears throat> our vibrational consciousness scale and how you kind of want to stay in that love and light vibe. Um, it's kind of important to stay there, um, but you can have days where you do fall below, but with this vibrational scale, okay, and, it, and the reason why I'm going to teach you guys about grounding and centering tonight, first of all, what is grounding and centering, and, and I'm going to explain this to you. When you feel scattered and you feel like you're kind of disconnected from your body, disconnected from your friends, that means that your energy is everywhere. Okay, so being grounded means being fully present in the body and connected to the energy of the earth, which is the consciousness of Mother Gaia, of course. So being grounded is being fully in your body because what happens is people may not realize this, but your soul doesn't always stay in your body. We astral project, we learn lessons, we go about our days and so forth and so on. So, but when we meditate and we're doing spiritual stuff as we are all doing here in this class, um, when we do spiritual stuff, it's almost like you're a helium balloon kind of just going around and just kind of touching the ground every once in a while, but you're not grounded. And by not being grounded, this is actually what happens is we're supposed to be in the present moment. As I mentioned last week, being in the present moment in the here and now, okay, is the only moment in time that exists, okay? If you're living in the past, okay, this will bring on sadness. This will bring on depression. If you were living in the future, over here, the future. When you're living in the future, you're actually have anxiety and you're worried about things. So what we need to do is get to the bottom one, which is the present, and maybe think a little bit about the past, maybe think a little bit about the future, but being focused and being in your physical body. We have what's called the casual chakra, <clears throat> and I'm going to discuss chakras with you right now. So the word chakra, okay, actually is a word from Sanskrit, and the word actually means disc. And they actually believe that this disc spins. And it also represents, if you look at a chakra, starting with number one, which is the bottom, lower base here, okay? When you look at that bottom chakra, okay? This is supposed to be your connection to going into the earth and to be connected and help. People don't realize, but we build up kinetic energy throughout our day. We scatter our energy everywhere. And this kinetic energy goes into our aura and it actually can be used. It can actually make us tired It can because things are draining from us from those spaces. So these chakras represent a lotus flower. If you look at the bottom chakra, this is your primal chakra. This is your fight for flight. I need to get the heck out of here chakra. Something's not right. I'm running. Okay. That's what that chakra is. Okay. 
So that root chakra, actually, it ties you to everything. But if that's not grounded, you're going to have more anxiety in your life. You're going to have more pressures of not feeling quite connected. And it's just you leech, believe it or not, energy throughout your day by not being aware of this chakra system, believe it or not. The next one up is the orange, which is the sacral area, okay? So the lotus flower at the bottom, if you notice, is only four petals, okay? As we go up, now we're increasing the petals. The crown chakra, which is the very, very top of the head, is a thousand petal lotus flower. And the reason why it represents a lotus is because like the lotus, lotus grows from the mud in the muck under the water. And as it rises, it reaches enlightenment, reaches the surface of the water and becomes that beautiful lily that we see in the pond, okay? So that's why that's represented as the petals of the flower. So your sacral one, which is the orange one, this has to do with your sexual endeavors. Um, these chakras are actually tied into your adrenal system, your, 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 your glands, pineal, uh, all these glands are all tied into different chakras here as well. Now let's go up to the solar plexus. The solar plexus is located about three or four inches above your navel, your belly button. Um, this goes out like a cone in front of you and also to the back of you and people aren't aware of this either. But this is that gut instinct that you feel when somebody comes near you and you get that feeling like, ooh, this guy's kind of sketchy or something's not right here. That is your psychic sense saying, beware. <laughs> Watch out for this dude, okay? Now we have the heart chakra. When we hit the heart chakra, which is the center power play in our body, the heart chakra is humongous again goes to the front and as well to the back of us okay the heart chakra is wonderful in fact when i do a lot of reiki healing on people and i know they have an attachment i come behind them and i hug them and i put my heart chakra up against the back of them where their heart chakra is and i put my energy into them it's a great way to get that energy into them so it's awesome the heart chakra is the middle point if you notice here this is the middle point of the chakras so far, okay? So when you hit the heart chakra, now you're kind of going into more psychic ability. The bottom chakras have to do with digesting food. In fact, when I go on cases or do maybe a deliverance, I will not eat for a couple of days. I will fast because it tells my body not to work on the lower chakras. Hey, we need to get more spiritual here. We need to get more insight on what's going on and what we need to do here. So I will fast for three or four days, believe it or not, before going on a case. So now the next beautiful chakra is the throat chakra. The throat chakra has to do about communication, okay? And it has to do with lack of communication too. If your throat chakra is closed, that means you're not telling people what you what you want. You're not telling people how you feel, okay? And when you do that, you create blocks in your bodies, okay? And that's not a good thing because if you look at the throat chakra, it's actually the bottleneck for the rest of the body. So if that's blocked off, you're not getting energy to where it needs to be going, okay? The next one, okay, now we are up to the pineal gland. This is our third eye, lovely, lovely eyeball. Um and thank you, Sarah, so kindly. Um, so now we're up to the third eye. This is your um, psychic ability as far as usually you'll see visions. Um, I'm what's considered to be a dream walker. I walk through many people's dreams, believe, <laughs> helping them with issues that they may, may be having going on at the moment. Um, the crown chakra is the very, very top. Um, this is the connection to source, to the universe. You want to have this open. But now let's get a little bit deeper, shall we? Okay, so now this is what I just went over with you. Number one would be the root chakra at the very, very bottom. Um, here, hang on one second. Let me get rid of this banner that's going on here. Um, let's see here. Do, 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 do. I gotta find it first. Thank you. So, no, the banner. I need the banner to go at the bottom. Sarah's trying to get it for me. Okay, there she got it. Fantastic. Thank you, Sarah. Greatly appreciate that. 
Um, so anyway, so this is basically what we just went through. You have the root chakra at the bottom, and then you have your chakra area, your solar plexus, your heart, your throat, your third eye, and your crown chakra. The beauty of this, okay, is when all these things are going lovely and working properly. People think that when you open up psychically and you, oh, I've had, they think it's such a beautiful thing. It's not. You have to be, just like anything starting new, all the old has to be broken away. And unfortunately, this is done through the release of the Kundalini. In the root chakra, which is the very, very lowest chakra, the red in the root area, which is your coccyx, the end of your tailbone, there's known as, they believe again in Sanskrit, that there is a snake that lays dormant there. Her name is Shakta, okay? Shakta, when you have an enlightenment, whether it's through spirit, whether it's through dream state meditation, yoga practicing, Tai Chi, certain things that you do, when you have this release of the Kundalini, um, it can be insane. Um, I had it happen to me 30 years ago when I had the attachment I had. I know some people are going to end up going through it in chat that are with us or supposed to be with us tonight. Um, welcome. If there's any new people that have come in, welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I can't see chat right now because I'm pulling up all my diagrams here. So the release of the Kundalini. Um, it all runs off your nervous system. That's our electrical part of our bodies, okay? All these chakras. And when the chakras get going, they actually it believe that the kundalini snakes through them and goes up the chakras, okay, up to enlightenment. And then it snakes back down again, okay? And I have had this happen. And ironically, it only got as far as my throat. And I'll tell you why that happened in a second. I had fire. I mean fire. It was burning hot lava go up my spine and it hit me to my neck level and then it was freezing cold and it went right back down again. Okay. You guys may wonder why I have scars on my neck. Um, I, this is fused. My neck is fused. I actually was thrown over a balcony when I was a teenager, not realizing that my neck was broken. And I lived that way for many, many years and come to find out that I did have a broken um, vertebrae in my neck. So, and I'm lucky I didn't become paralyzed because of all these years, not realizing being stupid. So anywho, um, so that's why the energy only got this high and then it would shoot back down again. And if the Kundalini, believe it or not, isn't released correctly, it can be a dangerous thing because I'll tell you what happened to me. I actually was in bed and I actually was going up and down. I was actually convulsing. My whole body was the, the burning and the freezing and it was H-E double hockey sticks. It was hell. And, it, and plus I'm being oppressed by this thing and doing this at the same time. So now I'm giving power to the entity thinking you're doing this to me. And in essence, he kind of was because he was like bonging the Kundalini. He was waking it up because he was talking to me constantly. So I was constantly in that state of psychic psychicness. <laughs> I made that word up. It's not in the dictionary. Okay. Put, put a disclaimer up, Sarah. So anyway, um, so by working with that energy, we have, when we go through things, things are scary when you don't know what's going on. I have people in chat that they're going through this and my heart goes out to them because I know the, the fear in, in, in how you want it done and how exhausted, oh my God, how sleep deprived you are. I'm so aware of this. So this class tonight is going to be fantastic for you. Um, so yes, there are good ways to open the Kundalini. Um, I don't, again, I'm not looking in chat right this second because I have to kind of blow through these and stay on track here. So, all right. So here we are. Um, we've gone from the chakra system here, as you see, going up in colors here. All right, now let's take it a step further. Let's look at the hand. Okay, the hand, as you can see, has chakras on it. Okay, this is why when you're closing gateways and so forth and so on, I want you rubbing your hands together. You're waking up the chakras. When we begin Reiki, you will see my friend Mike and I do it. And all my friends, we start rubbing our hands. You're telling your hands, hey. 
we need the energy going here. Okay, but now let's look at this even crazier. Look at the smaller hands, okay? Do you see just the thumb alone, just the thumb alone has all the chakras. Do you ever see a priest bless somebody and they always use just the thumb? They never use the finger to put a blessing on the person. They always use the thumb. Why? Because number one, your heartbeat is in your thumb. Number two, all the chakras are in your thumb. All that power is in that thumb. That's connected to God. <laughs> you know, that's pretty, pretty cool. Now let's take it a step further, shall we? Just the hands. The hands are actually connected to planets. That's really insane. The feet. Hey, let's look at the feet. Look at the big toe. The big toe is just like the thumb. Okay. It has power. Your heart beats in there. Look at all the chakra systems and how it coincides with the body. When I do Reiki and tuning forks on people, I pay attention to their feet. Their feet has history. Their knees have history. I have to release that energy. It remembers where they've been. If I don't release that energy, it can actually it can actually leave like a sludge and make them move slower. Now let's take it a step further. You guys have heard the term, as above, so below. Here we go down the rabbit hole. Shall we go now? Okay. So this is the chakra system in our bodies. Now look at all the chakras that go up above us. Okay. It goes all the way up and these chakras go through dimensions. This is why we are anti-dimensional anti beings. Some days we're in third, sometimes we're in the fourth, some days we're here in the fifth dimension. It depends where we are. But what I don't like about these charts is it doesn't show the chakras below the feet. Okay, yes, there's more below the feet. There's a hundred and fourteen chakras and I'm hearing... There's more. Okay, so 114. So as above, so below. Here we go. Guess what? The earth has chakras. And if my girlfriend's in here from Australia, she can see that she's the solar plexus. Okay. So Mount Shasta, I've had talks with the angels about Mount Shasta. There's a lot going on with Mount Shasta, and you're going to start hearing a lot more about it in the news. So pay attention to that one. So as above, so below, here we go again. Guess what, guys? Your body chakra system is tied into planets. That's insane. So here we are. You can be centered and grounded into the universe and i'm going to teach you how tonight so that is as above so below kind of explained it all because why we want to be in the present moment when you're going around and you're asking your friends i don't know what to do what should i do what should i do with my life what should i do with my job what should i do about this girl i'm seeing what when you're asking questions you're looking and searching you're not centered because when you're centered I have talks with myself. <laughs> you have talks with yourself. And when you get your frequency up high enough, you talk to wonderful things. They're just waiting. Go meditate. We're trying to talk to you. But you're tuned into the AM station on a radio when we need you on FM because that's where the angels are. Okay. So when you start tuning in and working and balancing your chakra system, okay, be aware with intent. Remember intent. That's my big word. Intent. That's so important to keep yourself in the moment with intent. When I command something, I banish all negativity, both seen and unseen. I command you to leave my house as my words are spoken. So it shall be done. That's me bringing it in the how here and now. In Wicca, when they say, as I will it, so mode it be, they're bringing it in the here and now. As my words are spoken, it's done. End of question. I'm not waiting for stuff to happen. It's already done. Because the only moment that we exist in is now. So what we're going to do, guys, if you want to take maybe 20, 30 seconds, go to the bathroom, get a drink. Um, I want to do a center um, meditation. We're going to center ourselves and then we're going to ground ourselves. Okay. Centering ourselves is realigning our chakras, getting ourselves balanced, our back straight, our spinal column straight. Um, so we're going to position ourselves and get ourselves 
um, ready, and then I'm going to walk you through um, a meditation. So let me go into chat here. I haven't even been into chat for a while. I'm done with my stuff, so now I can run and jump over to here. Hey, guys. So anyway, Jasmine, glad you're here, sweetie. Happy birthday to your son today. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. We have the other Jasmine. Hi, Jasmine. How you doing? Kundalini. Yes, you got it, Jasmine. My my bad. I'm sorry, hon. I have all this stuff. I can give it to you in, in Messenger tomorrow or whatever. Um, if you have any questions, please go ahead and feel free to ask now. Um, it's probably a good time. I am going to start the meditation in a second. Uh, I'll take a sip off my coffee. Okay, some people refer to grounding as earthing in case you've heard that term earthing is kind of like grounding yes but i had a talk with things and they explained to me that earthing is more having your feet or a physical part part of your body literally no skin no shoes on against the earth that's more earthing um walking barefoot that's earthing that's a wonderful thing to do um grounding yourself you can sit under a tree with shoes on and jacket full apparel of winter on and you can still ground yourself um earthing you can't quite do because you're you're not naked sky clad there's a word for you there's a wicked word sky clad look that one up it's dancing naked under the full moon Woohoo! sky clad that's a fun word okay <laughs> so we are going to begin Got to go, guys. Okay, Jasmine. Well, thank you for tuning in. You can always finish watching this later. You have a great night. Much love and light, sweetheart. Thank you. Okay, so we are going to begin. So we need to sit comfortably. So the first thing you want to do is kind of sit back. Just You want to be comfortable, but kind of you want to align. So your heart chakra is over your hip area. You don't want to kind of be laid back in the chair, which you can do, but it's better to be sitting up straight to center yourself, okay? Once you ground yourself, you can lay back and be comfortable and relax. That's great. But the first thing you want to do is you want to align everything, okay? All right, so the first thing we're going to do, we're going to sit comfortably, just spine erect, in alignment with each other. I want you to relax your arms. I want you to relax your legs. I want you to take a deep breath in through your nose. I want you to hold it. Six, five, four, three, two, one. Release. Blow out the violet flame so you're burning away any negativity that's coming out. You know, you don't want to drop that on your floor. You got to deal with it later if it becomes conscious. So always burn. Burn your cords. Burn everything. Bye, Kenneth. Great to see you. Have a good night, sweetie. We'll see you real soon. <clears throat> so anyway, you don't want to be dropping that negative energy into the house. Uh, something just touched the back of my hair. <laughs> I got something in the room with me. Something just did that to the back of my hair. I felt it. It felt like little child fingers. So I think Alice is in here with me. Alice, are you in here with me? Casey, welcome. Welcome, welcome, Casey. Um, so we're getting ready to do a meditation. Did you want to go ahead and do a meditation with us? We're centering ourselves right now, Casey. This will help bring back. Oh, something just went by. Did you just look? What was that? Oh, and now my camera's messing up, guys. My hands are here, guys. Do you see this? Did you just see that? Oh, I get the full guilt. I get the full goosebumps right now, guys. I'm sorry, I do. I don't, it was a child, Sarah. I felt it, it was a child. It was caressing my hair and then it, oh my God. My legs are so cold right now. I'm, I'm literally, my body is just like frozen right now. I'm absolutely frozen, not with fear, but frozen. You saw that, Julie? Wow, can you do that again? Can you come touch my hands? Can you come play with my hands? That was really cool. 
My camera's messing up, guys, if you see the focus kind of going in and out on it. See that? So it's still here, and I can still feel it. It's pulled back that way a little bit. I feel like it's behind me again, and it's going to come this way again. So watch for it as I talk, I guess. Wow, that was crazy. Well, I want to do a meditation, but I want to watch. <laughs> All right, we're going to do a meditation, guys. Can you get on my bed? Go climb on my bed. Can you show them your footprints on my bed? If I literally see a foot indent going to that bed, um, the rest of this will be filmed from the living room. <laughs> oh, that's so crazy. My camera's still screwing up. All right, so everybody. Oh, let's do this. <clears throat> Our energy is going to bring in more stuff, too. So when we're done doing this, I, I guarantee there will be more activity going on in my room. They live in my bedroom because there's no activity in here. I get it. Activity. No, I didn't. Okay. Never mind. All right. Everybody take a deep breath in again through your nose. Big belly breath. I want your bellies blowing up as you do this. Okay. I want you to hold your breath now. Five, four, three, two. One, release. I want you to drop your arms down to your side or loosely on your lap. I want you to relax your shoulders. I want your spine in perfectly alignment over your hips, over your heart, over your hips. This is the way I want you to be. So please do not slouch just for this part. This is just the centering part. This is really important. Okay, take another deep breath in again. As you breathe in. See yourself breathing in peace, in love, in light. Feel yourself breathing that in. You don't have to hold your breath now. Release any anxieties through fire. Burn it with fire as it comes out so you're not dropping that ick energy into your home. Transmute it. You are alchemists. Be the alchemist. Transmute that negative energy to positive. Again, take another deep breath in, breathing in peace, breathing in love, breathing in light. Again, now blow out. Picture the flame being purple. This is called the violet flame. I use this actually when I do Reiki on people and I'm removing attachments. I blow the violet flame across them. It's very extremely powerful. You can look up the violet flame. It works through St. Germain and our holy fire works through St. Germain as well. Our holy fire Reiki is what we actually work with. So yeah, I'm typing on my keyboard here with my book. Okay. All right, now go ahead and um, something's typing on my keyboard because that's not me. Okay, something's messing with my keyboard now. Okay, I'm going to hold my book in my hand. So if it happens again, I know it's not me. <laughs> These guys are messing with me. Okay, all right. So now breathe normal. As you breathe normal, I want you to picture pulling back all your scattered energies. And what I mean by this is throughout your day, your boss is asking you to do this, and you're going to the copy room here, when you're going to get coffee here, you're going to lunch here, you're meeting friends, dealing with family, coming home, and your energy is not with you any longer. It is at work. It's in the copier room. It's at the coffee shop. It's everywhere else but with you. So at the end of the day, you're what? You're exhausted. You're exhausted. So now I want you to picture pulling back. Take another deep breath in through your nose. As you do that, picture all your energy now coming back to you. It's coming back from your children's school play. It's coming back from work. It's coming back from the... <coughs> Sebastian, stop. Sorry, somebody just tooted a horn outside. Okay. Not good for meditation there, puppy face. Okay. No, puppies. No. Okay, so now take another deep breath in again and again. I want you to picture pulling back all your energies now that you know where to pull them back from. Okay, take another deep breath in and do that. Now, without thinking, see pulling back all your energy that was scattered about during your day. With each natural breath, picture yourself becoming more whole. Okay. 
picture holes in yourself right now. And as you pull this energy coming back to you, picture the energy filling in these gaps and these holes in you, in your etheric body. Now feel your energy, feel your essence. It's forming, it's, put it in your heart space. Definitely put this energy into your heart space, Sarah. I hope you just put that up. <laughs> Did you put that up, Sarah? Did you put that up? Just say yes in chat. I'm good because I didn't do that. So that had to have been a you thing. Okay, thank you. So when you sit here and you pull your energy back into yourself, picture yourself feeling whole again, feeling complete, okay? Intent is everything. Remember this. I cannot stress this enough how big intent is, okay? Um, so when you put it into your heart space, and this is the reason why I love to put energy into your heart space. Did you know that the coherence, the energy between your brain and your heart, which do you think is more powerful? You would think it's the brain. It's not. Your heart has a thousand times more resonance, more vibration, more power than your actual brain does. And that is how incredible the heart is. Where actually the angels say we're going from being left brain, right brain right now. And all is coming together and going into the heart space. When somebody comes up to me and says, hey, I'm not happy in my life. Why are you so happy? Where do you find the happiness? I said, you, you, I said you're looking in the wrong place. <laughs> Everybody looks, I'm here. I looked for a man to make me happy. I'm looking for a woman to make me happy. I'm looking for my job to make me happy. I'm looking for more money to make me happy. No, go inside yourself. It's about quieting your mind centering yourself as we just did it only takes 30 seconds when you get good at it i just have to say center and it's done it's that quick i have a helicopter going overhead what are the odds <laughs> so anyway so by keeping yourself centered throughout your day good um you can actually you can actually take a take a lunch break just even going into the bathroom um at work and stuff and just taking a moment sitting down and just i'm instantly that's how quickly it is for me i'm instantly centered when i do that okay so now prana which i've spoken to you before prana is breath work okay you can actually mess with your brain through breath work by this is I'm breathing one nostril I'm exhaling through the other nostril I just did that too that actually messes with left brain right brain and it actually makes them kind of start to it our bodies are trained in certain ways and when you take that body out of that training or that natural that autopilot mode things start to change in your life Okay, you got to get yourself out of the matrix. Okay, get yourself out of that neutral. I'm just flying through life and wherever I go, here I am. <laughs> Remember that, wherever you are, there you go. So anyway, so why not tell your destiny what you want? Why not put that vibe out there, that love and light vibe and say, hey, you have to be careful what you ask for, and I'll give you for an example, though, because um, magic and things, don't be a zombie. There you go. Don't don't be the zombie bug <laughs> or the zombie snail. Um, so when you put that love and light vibe out there, power of attraction, okay, you're attracting more. Instead of bitching, instead of complaining about your day, let's tell the day what we were thankful for. I was thankful I got home in one piece. I was thankful that my children are fine and safe and we're all sitting around the table eating supper. Look at the stuff that you're thankful for. It's so easy to point out the stuff that's wrong in your life. But let's look at the stuff that's thankful for it. Because if you go back to that consciousness scale, gratitude, being thankful for things and um, everything, it, it's falls in love and joy and peace you're working pretty high on the ex uh, on on the scale here acceptance is even awesome 350 that's fantastic neutrality and what i mean by neutrality is 
don't see yourself as being the victim. Stop seeing yourself as being the victim. Understand the learning and understand the teaching behind what's being taught to you at this moment. You know, I'm floating in my car in my driveway. <laughs> you know, I learned I needed Moses for two seconds to part this water so I could get out. But I also learned not to drive my car through a huge lake because I will kill it. Uh, there were valuable lessons there, but I ended up getting a brand new car and got an extra two money afterwards and and um so that worked out well so all happens for a reason you may not see the design of it until it actually plays all out completely so go with the flow don't overreact that's the worst thing that you can do because number one you're wasting energy by overreacting oh my god i don't know what to do you're overreacting. Plus, if it is something to do with a negative spirit or a happy little child that was blowing through here, um, when it has to do with a negative spirit, they will pull more energy from you. Oh, she's in a negative state. I can play with this. Ha <laughs> ha. Let's go. Okay. You don't want that. Don't give them things to play with. We have had burst of a moment where I'm just outright ticked off in this house. Okay. And I know not to continue the fight in an end. We know not to continue yelling and screaming because all we're doing is feeding what is negative here. Okay. And we're making it bigger than it needs to be. You can always react later. You're not losing the opportunity to react. Okay. But by breathing prana, you're instantly giving your brain more oxygen. Number one, number two, you're centering yourself. Thank you, Sarah. You're centering yourself in the here and now by taking that breath. My grandmother used to drive me crazy. God love you, Nana. I bet you so much. I has to have my armor. I got to have my brush. Take that deep breath. She, we would go to the ocean in Harpswell every summer and take it in. And I used to think she was crazy. Leave me alone. She wasn't. She was intelligent. She's, it was the crone. <laughs> Made mother and crone. She's the crone. Whoops, I gave you the fingers. <laughs> She's the crone at this point, which is awesome because when you get older, you get wiser. And the reason why you get wiser, guess what, guys? Did you know that your aura around you is your magnetic field? Okay. Now, as above, so below. Magnetic field of the earth. Did you know what's in the magnetic field of the earth? Now look at you. It's called the Akasha Records. The Akasha Records is a spiritual library. You can actually program yourself if you get up high enough in frequency to tune in to this lovely library. Your past lives since the beginning of time are there in that library for you, plus all the history of the earth and everything else. And you can do meditations and tune into this beautiful Akashic Records, the library, okay? And you can find out your past. You can find out traumas that you can heal maybe in this lifetime so you can evolve to better and higher places. Why not? I'm not coming back. <laughs> I've already made that deal. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing and I'm teaching people and I'm showing them things is because I want to raise myself up too to help me because I don't want to come back and do this anymore. At least I want a vacation, a good long vacation. I'm good with this. But I love you guys and I want to help you and I want to get this across to you that our bodies and our environment tell us to how to act. Stop. Stop being the zombie like Sarah said. Start taking control of your mind. When you have a panic attack, hey, say, hey, mind. I understand. Hey, Mikey, Mikey. I understand. Oh, I'm talking about your favorite topic, Mike, the Akasha Records. Oh, here is another tip, too, and you can go look this up. Guess who's in charge of the Akasha Records? The Akasha Records are kept by dolphins and whales. That's insane. And guess who writes the Akasha Records for Earth? He's a scribe. It's Metatron, the first angel ever born. And guess what? He did take on human forms. He was Enoch. You can look it up. And they also told me this one, which you probably won't find it anywhere because they told me this. And he also said that he was Thoth. I'll show you who Thoth is. Excuse me. 
again, another one of my artworks here. This is Thoth, Egyptian. Hey, look what he's got in his hand. He's got a pen. He's also, he's scribing. <gasps> wow. Did you know I was also told that Jesus Christ was Osiris and Isis was Mother Mary? How insane is that? They tell me beautiful things. I have books that I've written with these wonderful beings. In fact, did you know that with every power center, chakra center in your body has an angel attached to it? The throat is Michael. Gabriel is in charge of the lowest chakras. Your soul, your earth soul chakra, excuse me, which is below your feet about seven or eight inches, okay? That is Sandalfron. Sandalfron, the angel Sandalfron. You probably never heard of him. He's a good guy. He's all about joy, peace. <laughs> um, so that's pretty cool. Um, the heart, sometimes you see when you see the chakra system, sometimes they show the heart instead of green, it's pink. Pink is Shamuel. Angels have colors. They will show their colors to you if you ask them to. Archangel Michael's beautiful blue, the same color as the throat chakra. Raphael is the primary one that I work with through the heart chakra. That's, he's the color green, okay? I work with him. He's also east. When I call in the cardinal points, I call forth the guardian of the east of air. Archangel Raphael, please, and come and watch throughout the destroy. God, this gate so none may come in love and trust. Well, you know, whatever I need to say, it's all intent. But he's the angel that I work with for healing people through Reiki. That's who we all work with. Shamuel angels work in tandem. They work together, too. Shamuel works with Raphael. Archangel Michael works with Metatron. That's the one with the 32 wings. In fact, if you look on the YouTube channel, my little logo there in the corner is actually Metatron. You can look. He's got 32 sets of wings, but you can't really see them there. He's all about sacred geometry. Um, he, he, he's, he's just totally amazing. So let's move on from here. Okay, so prana is about staying in control, is putting your body, because your soul... Okay. This is a hologram. I, my hologram's a little overweight right now. Okay, so this is a hologram, okay? Depending how your spirit is, which... Your Caswell chakra is about eh, about seven or eight inches above your head and then to the back. So it's up and back. And I'm gonna explain something to you and you're, you're gonna you're gonna have an ah moment, okay? You getting ready guys? Because here comes the ah moment, right? All right. The Caswell chakra is where Metatron dumps down light codes, DNA coding, activation coding for you to wake up, for you to evolve. And guess what it causes? It causes your ears to ring tinnitus. This is that constant ringing in your ear that won't stop. Thank you, Metatron. We love you. Okay. It's quite funny. It really is. Believe it or not, when your clear audience, okay, your regular ears are here on the side of your head, okay? I have somebody I'm working with in here that's clear audience, just like me, okay? You hear with your physical ear here. When you're clear audience, you hear up here. When you see with your eyes, you see here. When you close your eyes, notice where your eyes go. Right now, close your eyes and where did your eyes go? They went up towards the center of your nose. Did you notice that? They went up where? To your third eye. Your third eye, believe it or not, they have discovered it does have cones in it, in rods, just like your regular eyeball does. Okay? That's kind of crazy. There's liquid in it. They just realized that there's crystals in it and that when you meditate and when you do deep breathing, the prana that we do and all these lovely things, the crystals start to vibrate. When these crystals start to vibrate, Jesus Christ, if you want to get religious about it, but I don't, when I say his name, to me it's not religion, um, is the God's light. Um, the Egyptians, the Egyptians, okay, the hieroglyphs that they write, okay, 
this actually this one this actually spells art believe it or not a r t this is a this is r and this is t in egyptian okay so anyway um it's all my handiwork it's actually 3d it's really cool but um they actually draw themselves with the pineal gland or a pine cone. It's a pine cone in their hand. That's what that represents is the pineal gland. And then they draw, have drawings of spaceships and everything else on the side. So it's, it, this is where supposedly they get their information from. Um, anyway, so let's go on to... So there are many techniques. I just want to touch this really quick. There are many techniques and, and ways to center yourself. Again, look how quickly it is. I do, the, in Reiki, this is called the gasso position right here. Okay. I'm making, let me put this back down. Sorry. I'm trying to help you here. Okay. This is called the gasso position. My thumb is pointing where? Into my heart chakra. And the reason why I dump energy there, and I didn't mention this earlier, I didn't finish the thought because I do that a lot, is your heart pumps. Your heart pumps everywhere throughout your body. So why not pull the energy into your heart space and let your body do the work for you? Why make it extra hard or harder than it needs to be? Sorry, that was improper English. I'll talk to my English, uh, uh, my English angel leader. <laughs> Ash, suddenly I heard my granddaughter. I mentioned that in the reading, turns out the person I was reading for had recently lost her grandma. Wow. So um, the beauty of grounding and centering yourself and doing all these lovely things is you bring yourself up in frequency as you go up in frequency you talk to beautiful things i find the more i help people believe it or not it gives me more psychic ability because i'm not using it for me i'm using it for humanity i can connect like i said with the tree outside my window i don't even have to go out inside and do it through intent i love you mr tree can you put that down into your roots and then the roots go to other trees. And then from the other trees, ha, 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 from the other trees, these roots go down into what's called the ley lines. I'm trying to find my other paperwork here. Sorry, guys. The ley lines. L-E-Y, ley lines, okay? Ley lines are a crystal grid. I just want to see if I get it in the paperwork here. There's a crystal grid that covers the world. Okay. Believe it or not, the heart chakra of the world of Earth, you're not going to believe this where it is. But when I say it, you're going to say, oh my God, that makes so much sense. Ley lines, when they come together, they like chakras, they create a power center in that area when they crisscross. Okay. The earth chakra, okay, is Stonehenge. That is the earth's heart chakra. So that's crazy, okay? Um, I have also been told that the earth is the heart chakra of the Milky Way. So that's kind of crazy. Um, the earth is a very valuable planet because if the world blows up the akasha records are here i mean any energy doesn't go away but it gets dispersed and, but the akasha records are here and not just for our planet but also for other galaxies it's actually holding like i said metatron writes the scribe okay writes all this information down and keeps all this information i remember the first time i talked to him this is how he introduced himself to me oh catherine your collective family of light is here i like you i'm a scribe i knew what the word scribe was but i had to make sure we were talking about the same thing because i write and i write and i write and i teach and i teach and i teach and i, teach and I, and I have journals and amongst journals i'll show you all the automatic writings i've done with them i did i had to do one yesterday because the chakra system and the angels tied to them on the internet are wrong <laughs> I had to do an automatic writing with them to get 
what angel belongs to what chakra because it was driving me nuts. I sat there for two hours and this is not consistent and I can feel that this isn't right. I know that Archangel Michael is at the throat chakra. Why are you telling me that he's of the heart? That's not right. It drove me insane. And finally, I said, you know what? <sighs> Gasso position. <laughs> okay. I pictured the holy fire light going through here, going into my heart chakra. Okay. Very powerful. I need to talk to you guys. Yes, Catherine, your collective family of light is here. We would love to explain to you their chakras. Okay. They are also, you have angels that are um, attached to birthdays, days of the week. Um, they're as above, so below, if you think about it. Now, let's think about it this way and take it a step. People don't believe in fairies. You saw a fairy last time on stream. You saw it. It, it came in. I was talking about fairy. It came in. It buzzed around my shoulder, and then it took off again, okay? It's on the first video if you want to watch it. It's almost towards the end. But anyway, my point is angels are colors, and they protect and serve a purpose, so let's not make them smaller, which they're not people, by the way, they're energy, because I have pictures of them, uh, which I can't show here, but I do have pictures. I'll, I'll bring them up. I would like to do elementals, maybe next one, which would be great. Um, but by doing, um, by working with the fairies, they're just smaller beings. They're smaller angels. That's what they are. They all show colors, just like the angels do. As above, so below. That's really crazy. Um, Sarah and I have actually, we have um, a tape recording from an elemental being. Um, they contacted us probably, I think it was about 30 years ago, Sarah, was it? Um, they contacted us. They leave me feathers. Um, so that's kind of crazy stuff. And I would make things and healing things for people. So anyway, so now what I would like to do is I want to ground ourselves. Okay. Again, grounding, earthing. Um the angels told me the reason why we have so many autoimmune diseases. You never heard of autoimmune diseases when we were children, if you think about it. I have people that I know that have Lyme's disease and have all these disorders. And, and rheumatoid arthritis is another one. Believe it or not, or arthritis, these things, because your feet, I showed you the chakras on your feet, okay? Your body is constantly, think, think about a cell, the osmosis. That's the coming and going of fluid and, and something through a cell, okay? Think of the osmosis, the coming and going of things, okay? When you have negative energy in your bubble, your aura, that needs to go away from you, okay? By doing that centering thing that we just did, breathing out through your mouth and so forth, by doing that, you're clearing out the negative energy, the out moded energy from your field by doing that okay and then you bring in good energy and it's it's kind of like an osmosis thing okay so when you sit here you want your cells in your body they renew themselves believe it or not this is really crazy is that i was told all right that in the days, I don't, um, I'm not a Bible thumper. I don't believe in everything in the Bible. Absolutely not. And they agree with me as well. Um, but there's parts in the Bible where they talk about living to be 200, 300 years old. Okay. They didn't age back then. We age now. Why do you think that is? We age because when we're passing energy through osmosis out of our bodies, our feet are doing it too. Do you ever see those pads? And I think the Chinese, they put them on the bottom of their feet and they wake up the next morning and they're pure black. That's toxins coming out of your body. Now think about this. You're putting your same shoe on every day with the same insole in that shoe and you're putting it back into your foot and you're forcing it back into your body. And guess what? Now you have autoimmune problems. I am barefoot constantly i'm 54 years old okay i can't dye my hair anymore so yes there's gray in it i'm severely allergic to hair dye it will kill me okay so but that's my body saying hey there's something which is called ppd that's in hair dye in fact it's outlawed um it's it's against the law to have it in europe because it's so toxic and bad for the body. So your body will tell you something's not right here, you know? Just like I don't wear certain other things like mascara, I can't wear that anymore. 
keep on the ages and gets older. But again, other than my back issues, I feel great. I really do. I feel centered. I feel perky. I feel like I can, you know, I, it, it's just crazy. Again, but a lot of it, and I tell my clients, fake it till you make it. Convince yourself. Stop telling your body you're tired. Stop telling your body you're sick and sick and tired. <laughs> okay? Start telling your body, you know what? Hey, we're alive again today. Ugh. I feel good. I'm six feet above the ground. I think I'll do something with this day. Maybe I'll meditate. I spend my days, you know, I don't just have all this stuff just in my head. It's in my head, but I got to make sure that I'm telling you the truth. In fact, on the last class, I noticed I was docile in Wittershins. Docile is clockwise. Wittershins is counterclockwise. At the beginning of the video, I had it backwards because these are wicker terms I have not used in years. Okay. And, but at the end of the video, I said, no, Wittershins is counterclockwise. Okay. And docile. Anyway, so I got it right at the end of the video. But again, I want to make sure that the stuff I'm giving to you is factual. And again, you don't have to take everything I have to say as, oh, this is word and this is it. It's I'm talking, this is intent. You take what I have and what works for me and you warp it and you twist it and you make it part of your repertoire and see what works with you. Exactly, Sarah. Exactly. So let's do a grounding now, okay? Because this grounding is really amazing, okay? So let's do the grounding. Um, let's see how. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. I'm just going to do my own because I know I do it all the time. Okay. Okay. So again, we want to center ourselves because. Cat went on talking way too much and get everybody out of that groove. Okay, so take a deep breath in, align your spine again. I go into the gospel position when I do this because I picture not just roots coming off the top of my head. I'm also picturing roots coming off the top of my fingers. Remember the chakras here and off my thumbs and that's going up too. Okay, and again, it doesn't necessarily need to be God. It can be source. It can be whatever you want to call it. Okay, they know their names. It doesn't matter. I think religion to fight about is the worst thing that you can do. It's like, uh, anyway, we won't get into that. So here we go. Take a nice deep breath in. Again, exhale with the violet flame, burning away anything that's negative or nasty from your day. As you inhale again, big belly breath. I want you to inhale love and light, peace, tranquility, your body's relaxing. I want you to close your eyes now. Your eyelids are getting heavier. Breathe normally, relax. From your bottom, first chakra, which is your coccyx, which is your tailbone, I want you to picture as you inhale, and blow it out. I want you to picture roots coming out from that area and going into the ground. We are going to the crust of the earth. We're going down to the mantle. We're going down to the crust, to the center sun. The angels call it in the center of the earth. I want you to connect your roots into that beautiful sunshine that's down there. And then I want you to take them and make an infinity sign. This will leave you grounded longer. So you don't have to do this every day. Okay. Do do this when you feel scattered. Do do this when you feel disconnected from your body. Like I said, your soul lays up here. This is a hologram of how your soul is feeling. If your soul is happy, this is going to look happy. Okay. Bring your soul back into your body, into the here and now. It goes off when you're sleeping, so it can be here during the daytime. We need it here because it gets us to point A to point B without hurting ourselves, okay? We need it inside, not floating above us, okay? Take another deep breath in. Again, you've tied your roots off into the central sun, okay? Now I want you to take a deep breath in, and as you inhale, I want you to picture that beautiful lava coming up right up 
it's coming up through the center of the earth now it's coming up through the crust it's going into the bottoms of your feet it's entering into the tailbone of your spine it's going up now through the root chakra picture the color red now it's going through the sacral chakra picture the color orange now it's going through your solar plexus the beautiful color yellow we're going to dump it in our heart space oh i want you to put it picture green beautiful green and i want you to picture it spinning and i want you to picture putting that energy into that heart space and again we're going to do the infinity sign a side woods eight a side words eight side words why, why can't i say that word tonight side words why does that sound so strange i'm strange okay so picture an eight sideways there we go sideways okay picture it tying it off here because now your heart's going to pump it everywhere and that's what we want we need that extra energy just talking about this makes me want to i feel like i've had 20 cups of coffee all right now what i want you guys to do is i want you to focus on the top of my head and you'll probably see stuff zip by me so pay attention okay so now what i want you to do back in the castle position because it helps me center myself okay the other thing too when you're doing this very important i know you guys are doing it and you're going to un crush your legs right now i don't want any crossed ankles and i don't want any crossed legs because when you're pulling the energy up and you're cross-legged you're blocking it don't block it unblock yourselves please intent unblock okay so now i want you to picture almost like a cell phone tower okay so when i say picture cell phone tire tower going off the top of your head i want you to picture a pyramid pyramids are great pyramids are power okay so picture a pyramid so okay so now again let's close our eyes Take a deep breath in, blow out the violet flame, breathing in love and light. I feel at peace. I feel one. I feel present in my body. Okay. Now with the next breath, as I inhale, I want you to again picture that tower coming off the top of your head with intent going all the way up. We're going past the sun, Helios, past the moon, Selene. Okay, all these beings have consciousness to them. Say hello as you go by. Okay, take, breathe normal now. Okay, sorry, I still left you inhaling. Okay, so keep going up past all the planets. I want you to find the dark matter. And here's another beautiful thing that the angels told me that I'm about to share with you. The dark matter in space that keeps planets from floating off into oblivion. Okay, holds everything gravitational force in place okay this dark matter is heaven or summerlands or whatever you want to call it okay this is the place where the lovely beings are our ascended masters our guides our beautiful things that are helping us okay these lovely beings are there so look for the dark matter think about dark matter what is blackness? It's when all the colors of everything, of your chakras, come together as above, so below, into the dark matter. There you are. You're connected. Now I want you to picture this is what it looks up there, looks like up there, at least to me. To you, it may be different, but to me, if I can just give you a visual so I can give you some place to plant yourself, okay? That's what I'm trying to do right now. So visualize what you want. Every time I go there, it's big. It's marble and it's white and it lacks color because the vibration is so high frequency up there that color cannot hold its color because the frequency vibrates the color away. This is the 11th dimension. Jesus Christ and them are supposedly supposed to be in the ninth dimension now because they're coming closer, trying to help humanity, help humanity. He's not going to physically show up here on earth and say, hey, here I am. He's activating people. He's activating you. He's activating me. He's activating all of us. And they told me that those who have not woken up in a year or so will not wake up again in another 25 years. It's not because they're being punished. It's because it all has to do with about planet alignment. 
Do you notice a lot of history came out this year? Oh my God, this hasn't happened for 150 years. Okay. That's what it's about. And remember I said, there's an ebb and flow to everything. When you learn to go with the ebb and flow and stop trying to be that swim, that fish swimming upstream against the current, you're exhausting yourself. Change is inevitable. It will happen. You can't fight it. You may as well just say, Hey, I need a new adventure. Trust in yourself, live in the here and now. Be happy in the here and now. And if you're not, fake it till you make it. And remember, if you're not happy where you are, you put yourself there. Somehow, some way, you're there because of your agreements to be there. Whether it's you chose to be in a relationship that might not be suitable for you. Now is the time. In fact, we're going into retrograde tomorrow. Okay? And on top of that, uh, it's... Energy is very, very emotional right now. It's about clearing out your emotional baggage. Start releasing stuff. Now is the time. You want to go up in frequency? You want to talk to wonderful beings? Release the crap that's holding you down in the lower frequencies. Uncle John may have molested you. You know what? I'm not going to forgive him, but I'm going to let that crap go. I'm going to cut that cord because I don't want to be held down in that vibration of it anymore. Like a millstone holding me at the bottom of a pond. I can't go. I can't swim. Stop putting yourselves in these spiritual cages and let yourself go. When you clear up the darkness in you, we all have shadow selves. It's the bad in us that's done wrong. The first part of our life we're supposed to screw up. We're supposed to make boo-boos. We're supposed to learn from these mistakes, hopefully. And the second part of our life is about to say, huh, that was a pretty crazy ride. I'm surprised I'm still here. You know what? I'm going to take the second part of my life and I'm going to find peace. I'm going to get out of that drama zone. And you know what happens when you get out of that drama zone that everybody's, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. It's the breakdown that needs to be necessary. We're going into what's called the new golden age. You can look it up. It's called the new golden age. Mother Gaia is going up in frequency. We are in the fourth dimension now. We are working up towards the fifth dimension. I don't need my glasses on anymore. So um, this is where we're headed. Okay. This is the earth. Think of it. Um, we're on a scale right now. Okay. Good versus bad right now is what's going on. Okay. We have fluxes. Okay. depending on right now, we're going into a full moon. So it kind of goes heavy towards the negative side because they have more power to draw off of at that point. The more people who open up in this world are bringing that balance back. The release of the kundalini, these things, as I said, everything serves a purpose. When you get a negative attachment in your life, it is teaching you valuable lessons. It's waking you up because you would not wake up psychically. You would not be looking for answers. You would be comfortable and complacent and not move, not evolve if it wasn't for this negative stuff. We would not know what light is without seeing the darkness first. Everything serves a purpose. There's no coincidence. All this stuff happens. You guys are in this classroom right now, not because it's an accident. We met through Sarah. Okay. Everything serves a purpose. I raised her to be a certain way. She was my wicker daughter. I raised her in love and light to love nature, to worship nature. Okay. Not to hurt things, to respect things. She shares that with you. Look how she's become, you know, you pay it forward. I help you guys. I teach you guys. And then in turn, I hope in another five or 10 years, when you guys really understand how this all works, you're going to go forward and say, hey, I have people, clients I've helped. They're ordained now. They come up to me and I'm doing what you're doing and, and you helped me and I'm helping them and that makes my millennia, okay? That makes me, my heart, I grew three sizes that day. I'm the Grinch when I hear that stuff. My heart gets huge, seriously. And it's not an ego thing. This is, God, I get another one for you. And I don't mean recruiting you and, and I don't do that. I don't Bible thump. I, I don't even, you know, 
Sorry, Bibles. I love it, but no. Your reality is your intent. Your reality is your belief, okay? I'm not here to change your beliefs. I'm here to expand your horizons. I'm here to consciously expand you. Because the physical body, we think that we're, you know, Edgar Cayce described it best. He's the sleeping prophet, in case you don't know who Edgar Cayce is. He would go to sleep and he, people would ask him questions and he would tell them, this is how you fix this illness. This is what you need to do to save this boy's feet or save his eyes or whatever, okay? He was a sleeping prophet, okay? Edgar Cayce says, you have to unlearn just as much as you've learned. They taught me algebra in school. Do you know how much algebra I use today? <laughs> Do you know how valuable it would have been to know how powerful I am and that we can actually manipulate our environment? Like I said, I did biokinesis. I changed my eyebrows from brown to green, okay? You can convince yourself. You can convince your body. You're having a panic attack. No, we're not having a panic attack. We're safe right now. There's nothing around us that's causing this panic attack. We can relax now. It's okay. All right, start talking to your body because just as I changed, hang on one second, guys. Just as I made my holy water, I changed the beautiful regular water in here and now it's holy. It blesses things. It's powerful, okay? I did that with intent. That is an amazing thing. So when you use intent, you have power. To manipulate in your environment okay when you believe as i change the water you're 75 to 85 percent water why not play with that hey i'm kind of getting the cold right now but you know what i'm going to go do a meditation even if you don't want to do a meditation listen to 528 hertz go on youtube there's a nine hour one i'll listen to it at night if i'm getting sick and i'll wake up the next morning and i'll feel great and the cold is gone because i vibrated myself out of that frequency of it cold sickness cancer all these things are very low vibrational if you keep yourself in a higher vibration you get sick less often you can actually shut off the dna in you that may be cancerous you can tell it no stay dormant there's no cancer here. I've worked with people, I'm not saying I cured cancer, but I yeah, seem to go that way. But I work with beautiful things that I know it's all in symbiosis. It's a very loving relationship. We all work together to strive for humanity and these lovely things. So going up to heaven, up like your tower coming off your head, what you do is when I go to heaven or, or summer lens or dark matter, okay, when you go to this place, it's all like Greek, the days of Athens. This is how I see it. And it's so crazy. It's marble and it's big stairs. And, and this is this room I walk into and there's thrones. It's a huge throne room and it goes down thrones, thrones. I mean, it goes on infinitely, infinitely. I can't see the end of it. It goes off into the darkness, but it's all white columns. In between the columns is a throne. Column, throne, column, throne, column, throne. Like that all the way down on both sides. Okay. Go find your throne. Meditate. Picture going up to heaven. Just send your energy up there and look for your throne. Ooh, oh, that must be it over there because I put a heart on it. The heart's still there, but the color's gone. So that must be mine. <laughs> they always take my colors away. I put flowers, go back. They're white. So anyway, connect to your throne and tie that infinity light to it. And then you take a deep breath. And as you exhale, I want you to picture that light coming down from above the universal energy. I want you to put it through your crown chakra, the top of your head. Put it down to your third eye. We're still inhaling it. Now it's down into our throat, behind our throat chakra, Archangel Michael. And now let's put it into our heart, into our heart space, okay? 
those again. We're going to tie an infinity knot in our heart space. And by doing that, again, your heart's pumping. It's putting that beautiful energy from as high vibration as it possibly can get into your body. You will feel like you've had a cup. I've done this before when I was at work and it was like three o'clock in the morning and I was totally exhausted. I just sit here and instantly <sighs> ground and center. I'm connected. And all of a sudden it's like, wow, it's like I just had five or six cups of coffee. Try it. Play with it. You're the alchemist. You're in charge of your life. Take your destiny back. Don't let it. You can actually break soul contracts. And we'll talk about that another time too. When we come here, we make contracts. I want to learn this time around because I want to work on this because this is going to help me evolve further up and over here. And then there's a thing called the tree of life. And I know you've heard it. It's called Yadrazil. That's its name. And I can't spell it. It's Y-Y-A-D-D-R-I-S-I-L, right? Yadrazil. Okay. That is the Celtic version of the tree of life. Okay. The tree of life, depending on what branch you're on, Okay, I could be down here. It doesn't mean that my evolution is low. It just means this is a part of evolution I need to work on to bring myself back up so I can get up to what's called the Kabbalah. Okay, these lovely things that are really high up on the tree. Okay, but depending on where you are, you can get into of all your. Did you realize? that it used to take many, many lifetimes to become evolved and they're actually speeding it up. Have you noticed that time is speeding up? Your days are going faster. Your weeks are going faster. I don't even know what day or the damn day of the week it is now. Because time is losing, okay, right now. We're not losing time, but what's happening is time as we know it is changing. Time is man-made. I need to be at your house when? This is back in caveman days. Okay, let me um, set my uh, rock here on my arm to a uh, quarter past pebbles here. I mean, they invented time because they needed to know where they needed to be at certain times. They needed to go. It makes life easier. Okay. Our time frame, and this is really going to blow you away, so you might want to listen to this. Our time frame here is different than it is where... Fairies are fairies, their dimensions right on top of ours, but they're at a higher frequency. So, blah, 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 blah. so what can be, let's see if I can remember this right. I need to hear it. Hang on. Okay. So what is one day for us here is like three days there. Okay. Do you ever hear the stories about if you ever go in in go to fairyland, don't eat the food or do the dance? Now, what did I say earlier about when I get ready to go out on a case or I'm helping a client or I got to do an exorcism or deliverance on somebody, I need my frequency high. I will fast for a few days because I'm preventing my body from eating so I'm not in my lower chakras. When you go into fairyland, Okay, this is the whole point of Rumpelstiltskin. You heard that story? That's what that story is about. Okay, when you go there and you eat their food, guess what? It grounds you. You're trapped there, supposedly. Okay, I've been there, meditated there, been back. I haven't been caught yet. So I guess I work with the good ones, though. There are bad ones. It's called the Sealy Court. These are the good ones. And then it's called an Unsealy Court. These are the bad ones. They're the ones that sour the milk on the cow. They're the ones that steal the babies in the night. This is why people in the olden days used to put bay leaves underneath the cribs of where the children sleep because they come in and they do a thing called the changeling. This is kind of crazy. The changeling where they take your baby and they create a baby out of earth and stone and rock and whatever they need to. And, they, and it looks like your baby and they put it in the crib and they do magic to it. It's called the golem. It will stay alive for a few days and then then the golem will start to die and deteriorate so you think your baby has died but your baby's gone off with the fairies now and living in fairy world <laughs> okay so there's crazy stories but there's always some truth as i said remember the diamond and the facets on the diamond everybody has their own truth 
Okay, so with fairy tales and all these beautiful things, um, there's always some truth behind it. I've actually talked to, and this is really going to be crazy, and you're going to really think I'm nuts because, oh, it's just mythology and that's not real and blah, 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 blah. I've talked to Zeus. In fact, I talk to him quite frequently. The first place he introduced, I am keeper of the skies. That's how he introduced himself to me. And, of course, my ego self says, I'll be right back. Let me look that up. Zeus. Keeper of the skies. Wow, that's pretty cool. I get amazing stuff. It really mind blows me. And, and I know it's high vibrational because I can feel the frequency of it. In fact, sometimes when I talk to it, it gives me such a headache because it's like, <gasps> can you pull back your energy just a little bit? Because I'm still in my human form. So I do automatic writings. Athena. I have, um, we're going to talk about spirit animals too here sometime soon. Um, Athena is my spirit owl. She's named after Athena, okay, the Greek goddess of war, okay. Her owl sits on her shoulder. It turns 360 degrees, so it can actually let her know that, hey, somebody's coming up behind her and is about to stab you in the face or stab you in the head, back of the head, okay? <laughs> Wouldn't be in the face. who's just coming from behind. Anyway, I say spirit stuff. So anyway, um, my spiritual owl will actually help me in soul retrieval. He actually gets pieces of souls and brings them back to me. It's insane. And how is this all done? What's the word, people, that I'm looking for here? How is this all done? This is all done through. Sarah, tell them. What is this done through? Intent. It's being that child, that little imagination of a two-year-old child our physical bodies take us from point A to point B, but when you can get out of your physical body through your head, and tonight I'm just trying to put you back in your body. Now I'm telling you, you can get out of your body. That's another class too. Okay. So you can actually, you decide what your limits are. Don't let somebody, when somebody tells you, you can't do that, that's their limitation. That's not yours. No, 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 no. Okay. That's their limitation. That's not your limitation. Don't let it be your limitation. The sky is the limit. The angels, I did an automatic writing with them yesterday. And the one thing they said to me, and they said in another automatic writing too, they actually said to me, Catherine, you're about to move mountains with the power of love. They asked me, the only thing that they asked for me is to spread the word of God. And believe it or not, the word of God is love. That's it. It's that simple. It's love. It's about learning to be in the here and now. And there's a delicate balance to life. I'm not saying you can't drink. And if you have to smoke pot, that is God given. <laughs> okay. As long as no extra substances and crap have been added to it, that's not good for you and good for your body, okay? But again, even smoking pot holds you at a certain vibration, okay? But if that certain vibration gets you over the anxiety, gets you over the pain, gets you do what you got to do in the moment, live in the moment. So important. So, so, so important, okay? Now I'm going to take you. And we're going to cut some cords from you guys so I can leave you in a good place when we leave tonight, okay? So what I want you to do again, I want you to close your eyes. I want you to take a nice deep breath in through your nose. Exhale through your mouth. I want you to breathe normal as you listen to the sound of my voice. You are safe. You are secure. You are surrounded by pure energy infinite light that never goes away. Archangel Michael is standing behind you. You have your etheric wings, your invisible wings from your spine. I want them to wrap them around you now. Okay. Now what I want you to do is to take another deep breath in and I want you to slowly open your eyes, but do not be scared. You are safe. I've put you guys in the ether. The ether is dark. The ether, I've been told, is God's mind. Everything in creation is created in this ether. When I showed you Metatron's cube the other day, 
Okay. This is Metatron's cube. This is the platonics of the universe. Big Bang. This is it. You're looking at it. It all comes from here. The circles represent feminine energy. The lines represent masculine energy. Every sacred geometry can be created from this. This represents earth, air, fire, water, spirit. Everything is created in this. This is Metatron's cube. Okay. Now you want a power grid. You want a crystal grid to do. This is the one you do. It's called Metatron's Cube. Okay. I'll type it in chat later on for you guys if you need it. You put a selenite. Did you know that selenite? Let me show you the crystal. It has them all around me. They're my babies. Okay. Selenite. They actually make fiber optics out of selenite, okay? Which means that it illuminates light from the inside. Do you realize this is, people talk about charging their crystals. You don't have to charge your crystals, right? You have to cleanse them. You have to clear the energy out of them. Because in order to say that you have to charge a crystal, it means my crystal gets charged, tired, and like a battery, if I don't charge it, it's going to stop working. A crystal always works. So you don't have to charge a crystal. That is a misconception. And I'm putting that out there now, and I'm probably going to get lots of nasty text messages after I'm done saying this. You need to clear the energy of them, okay? Did you know that selenite is the only one you never, ever have to cleanse the energy from? Do you know that selenite is the one that you want in the center of Metatron's cube? Because you want to put the other crystals around. These circles represent the seven chakras in the body. Hey, look, as above, so below. Here we go again. Okay. Okay. The heart chakra is here. And there's six on the outside. Hey, there's seven, just like what's in earth. Okay. So now you put the selenite here in the middle, and then you put which chakra represents. Okay. Um, I would also put a green stone on the side of here just to represent the heart chakra as well. Maybe eventually, you know, a green citrine would be great or anything. Um, Malachite would be wonderful there as well. Um, and then just go around and get the crystals representing the other chakras. And again, it doesn't matter it, just as long as they go in the sequence, red, orange, yellow, the green's going to be in the middle, of course. So you're going to miss that one. So, but then the blue and the purple, the indigo and the blue and the, the uh, purple and the, you get that. Whoop. What happened? Okay. So anyway, so that's great for doing that. So, um, Grounding and centering, so important. Um, cutting cords. So now we are in the astral realm, okay? And I want you to picture in your right hand, there's a sword. Archangel Michael's sword. And in the distance, about 20 feet away from you, there's a circle of people or a circle of beings around you. You may not even be able to see them clearly. You just see the outlines of them, but you can feel by their energies who they are or what they are, okay? I want you to turn to the first one with intent, even if it's somebody, and this is very important, this is very important, if it's somebody that has abused you in any way, I need you to turn to that person and say, I thank you for your teachings, no matter how good or bad they were, you no longer serve a purpose here, and I release you and cut myself from the frequency of you. Take that sword and swipe it as hard as you can and nail that cord. I want you cut and severed from that being, okay? The area that that cord came from, I want you to pull your energy back into that area and I want you to picture putting white light into that area and sealing that spot because you need, when we cut cords, you can't leave the area open. It's like ripping a scab off. Now I'm leaching out plasma, blood, okay? All this stuff is now coming out of my, you got to put a band-aid on it. So we got to put a spiritual band-aid on it. Same thing, as above, so below. Physical body, spiritual body, okay? When you start having common sense about this stuff, it really starts to, oh, my God, so that really makes sense now. 
you can start seeing outcomes of things and you can start seeing things more clearly. So now we've cut this cord. We want to put light into the area and seriously, see putting a bandaid on it. Put a spiritual bandaid across it. Only love and light can ever, because what happens is you leave this area open that you've cut the cord from, something bigger and better is going to come along and they always look for the easiest path of resistance. Ooh, I'm going to connect right back here because she just removed something from there and it's a big gaping hole and I can see the energy leaching and hey, you know, think of it as a parasite. Think of it as um, a slug. Think of it, you know, it's there to suck your energy away. You need your energy. You got things to do. Okay. So now I want you to turn to the next person in your circle. And if by chance you don't see somebody there and you think that there's nobody else around you, I want you to look at your body. This is called bio scanning yourself. We do this in Reiki. I do this to Reiki patients, okay, or clients. I bio scan them. I see the areas I need to concentrate on. Look at your body and see any cords. They're usually the cords, and I'll tell you the areas that come out. They come out from the back of the neck. They come out from the lower lumbar, usually L4, L5, S1 area. That's where they get me. Okay, six back surgeries later. Okay, um, another place that they usually is in the gut, but they always attach on the spinal column. Okay, did you know that the discs, disc is that word again? Disc that's above, so below. The disc in your back that are okay in your spinal column. All right, they contain information. That is your magnetic field. I've had a disectomy. I've had a few removed. My back is also lower areas also fused. So my point is, is that this information, valuable information in these discs, the disc in your back is the only place, and this is how you feed them, believe it or not, is through movement. You feed the rest of your body through food, through nutrients. Your spine and the disc in your spine is the only area that gets fed oxygen through movement. Do you ever notice when your back is so bad, you can barely walk and stuff, and then you get to work and you start moving around and all of a sudden your back starts to feel better? And you start to feel, hey, I'm good, until you go home and then you get stagnant again and then everything goes, Argh. okay, been there, done that, okay. But that's why, is because you feed your back through movement. The best thing you can do for your back is take on Tai Chi. Tai Chi, hey, I'm basically doing it right now. Do you ever wonder why you talk with your hands? You're not just speaking words to people. You're not just letting them hear your words. You're feeling my words. When I use my hands, you're actually clearing energy out of the way that's getting in my face because I have stuff to say to you, okay? It's something naturally that we do. Now you know why you move your hands around. You're moving energy. Everything is energy. Remember this, colors are frequencies. Each color has its own frequencies. Each letter of the alphabet has its own frequency. Everything has its own level of frequency, like that consciousness scale I showed you. So when we're taught... Uh, that couch is an inanimate object and it has no feelings. Guess what? That's another thing, Edgar Casey. You need to relearn that crap. Because if that couch is made of wood, there's consciousness there. Why do you think a house takes on residual haunts and it's playing it over and over again? The wood has memory to it. The rocks in the house or under the house have memory to it. Why do you think a quartz crystal on a watch keeps perfect time? There's energy and there's power in that, okay? These things can record things. Why are residual haunts played over and over again? Without it, it's something you can't talk to because it's there's no consciousness to it. But the consciousness is being played over and over again. You might hear the scream for some reason. A certain, I lived in a house, not this house, but another house from the 1798 called the Bryce Boothby House. You can look it up. Shirley Harrison lived there. My dead mother-in-law, the psychic search book there. Okay. When I lived in that house, that house, and you can ask Sarah, she'll attest to this right now. That house used to wake us up every night at 3.15 or every morning at 3.15 a.m. Exactly. And if there was a time change, you give it three days and it would acclimate itself and it would be back to that 3.15 again. 
only during the full moon processes. The closer you get to a full moon, the more active it would get. So I needed to sell this house. I don't want people knowing that it's really haunted. So I waited until it woke me up consecutively three or four nights in a row at that 315. And I went outside. I knew what happened on that property without anybody telling me until I asked the lady who used to own the property lived across the road. And I said, by chance, was there ever a fire here? Because I feel that things died here and there was a fire here. And she validated it for me. Horses and chickens and all these animals perished in this fire. The fire happened, guess what time? 3.15 in the morning. She remembers be living across the road. Her sister was across the street at this point. And um, actually, it's just so crazy how it all went down. But um, it, it's just nuts. It, it died. These things died. So I waited until that energy got me up and got me outside. And I said, we're done. I said, I'm talking to every animal, every, this is the first time I ever crossed animals in my life. It was great. In my mind, I put a big, huge light coming down and I will share this. I will show you my gateways. I have pictures of them through intent. They're amazing. You can actually see spirits going into them as well. I have crossed horses. I've crossed pigs. I've crossed chickens. I've crossed rats. I've crossed lizards. I've crossed. It's all out there. In fact, even driving down the road, I see roadkill. The energy is still attached to that dead body in the road. Did you know that? You can cross it by just saying, send you love and light. And you instantly raise the frequency of that and you release it through intent. Intent. So I think I'm going to stop here for tonight because I've just been rambling on. Keep doing the cord cutting, okay? Um, if you don't see anybody else standing in front of you by chance, just bio scan your body look for cords coming off cut the cords pull the energy back put that spiritual band-aid on okay you do this the grounding and centering i suggest in the beginning get used to doing it do it once a day i get up in the morning have a cup of coffee and as i'm doing it i'm sitting up straight i'm centering myself i'm grounding myself and i'm great for the day when you get good at this, you just got to think about it and it instantly happens. It's like riding a bike. The more you do it, the better you get at it. Okay. You guys have power in you and it's my job to prove it to you. Okay. Well, you saw my little ghostie here earlier. Ah, you can see that this life after death. <laughs> okay. This stuff is real. When you tell yourself this stuff is, doesn't exist, you're closing yourself off to the experience of it. Why do that? Say, hey, everything exists, and then start checking off. Well, no, this really isn't real. Learn from the experiment. Don't be afraid to have an adventure. Just make sure your frequency is high when you're doing it, if you're dealing with spirits. if you de well, How do I deal with all the negative stuff upstairs that's contained up there? How do I deal with all the spirits around the house? How do, how do we all deal with this? Through intent, through love. Love is the key here. Something's dark. I still send it love. My love and time will transmute that. I am an alchemist. You are an alchemist. We're all alchemists. You have the ability to man manipulate your environment. You have the power in you. I promise you. And by the time I'm done with you, you're going to come back to me and you're going to say, you're right, cat. Right? So I wish you all much love and light. I thank you here being tonight i have started a new channel this video will be going over to sarah sinister streams channel um my channel is just getting up and running right now um but i definitely have some crazy stuff coming your way i have some halloween stuff i'm going to do with you guys and that's really going to get you in the mood for the for the holiday spirit um so I promise you i got some great stuff coming please keep yourselves in high vibration buy groceries bless all the food in your it's not about religion it's just about using intent to raise the frequency bless all the food in your refrigerator now your children are eating this food your husband's eating this food you're helping everybody in your house by doing that why not take a second with intent and make your life so much better okay you just get out of that automatic pilot mode that we're all on okay much love and light 
Love you all. Shine, 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 guys. Thank you.